Hi guys, Tom here for TP23 Productions. Now, got another game review. This time around I'm reviewing the game Need for Speed Most Wanted. As you can probably tell, I was playing this game on PS3. And the game needed for you to be signed into the PSN, so the PlayStation Network. I agreed to go on the network, not a problem. But the update for PSN Need for Speed Most Wanted would have taken 222 minutes, which I can't understand why. I understand PSN is very slow, maybe it was due to the weather, I don't know. However, 222 minutes for an update, I ain't gonna do it. So once I did cancel the update, the game kicked me out of PSN. I found this pretty strange really, why, you know, why? Why 222 minutes? But straight away that was an annoyance, really. So, once that single confusion was out of the way, you were treated to a shortcut scene of Fairhaven, a city teeming with street racers. Fair enough, the ideal place if you want to do some street racing. Need for Speed then throws you into a car, this car being an Aston Martin, and they tell you to drive to a jack spot. My first impressions of the Aston Martin was that it was heavy, unresponsive, wanting to drift all the time and it felt as though I was not fully in control of the car. So the first race I was in was between a Porsche which I was driving and it was against an Aston Martin. The Porsche is a car that is given to you at the jack spot which was your first task, drive to the jack spot, collect up the Porsche. Once again the Porsche felt like the Aston Martin. It was heavy, unresponsive, not fully in control and not for one second did I think that the Porsche I was in was going to win the race against the Aston Martin. But somehow I did win the race and managed to do it on the last corner. On the very first race, um, once the race was over, it indicated that you can modify your car in many, many different ways. These include the tyres, the nitrous, the chassis, the body and the transmission. You can edit these by winning or doing well in races and the race at the start would indicate if you finished in a certain position what reward you would get. There were a few good songs that I heard in the short time that I played the game. There was a big Muse influence and I'm not a big fan of Muse really and they were every other song really. Every time you paused it, Muse. So if you like Muse and racing then by all means this is the best game for you. The first proper in-game race event that I did was called a power play sprint race. Uh, it was just to the right hand side of the map. I noticed that there was a load screen that was just there. There was nothing to say there was loading or there was a rotating processing sort of icon, even a tyre or something, but there was nothing. It was just a image and not the greatest image is that. Cutscene then showed a building site. So once the building site scene had gone, the camera did a loop through a crane and then zoomed into the back of my car. I found this very nauseating even before the rolling start race had begun. So building site, why the hell am I looking at a building site? And then it did a loop through a crane into the back end of my car and I didn't do very well in the race so I had to restart it a few times. And each time it did it over and over and over again and I couldn't skip it, it was it was quite off-putting and annoying, the fact that I had to see a rotating thing and then into the back of my car. It was silly and not needed. Once in the race, I did find that my Lamborghini was much faster than other cars. A mismatch of a race, really. Um, my car would start from behind, uh, all the other cars would go past me, I'd catch up and overtake them and be in first. It was... It felt a mismatch and wrong. While in the race, uh, with the third car, of the game. The car felt sluggish. Even travelling at 100 plus miles an hour, it didn't feel as though it was travelling very fast. I did notice that once my car had bounced off the wall, it was hard to get it off the wall really. Unless the wall had stopped, that was pretty much the best way to get off a wall I was stuck on. You couldn't really just move it. It was almost like it was magnetic to the wall. Unless it the wall ended, then you could just drive off. Like I say, if you're stuck on the wall and you manage to get off the wall, then it takes you straight into the opposite wall. So while I was in the race, I felt as though I had to turn the car um, away from traffic much earlier than what maybe I should have done. So if there was a van coming up, I had to turn it a lot earlier. The race, it wasn't fun, and I had the feeling of it being unfair 
and against me really. However, Need for Speed Most Wanted did have some good songs and too much Muse. The graphics of the cars are good, the surrounding buildings and scenery was okay. There were many cars to find and unlock, same with the car parts as well to earn, that was good. There are collectibles to find and smash, these including gates and billboards and signs. But Need for Speed Most Wanted, in my opinion, is not a good racing game. I am glad my friend only let me borrow it. I will be returning the game very shortly. And in all honesty, I enjoyed Grid 2 more than what I did Need for Speed Most Wanted. I think unless you are a real die-hard Need for Speed fan, then this one's for you. And especially if you enjoy music from Muse, because that was pretty much 90% of all the music I heard was Muse. Also, if you like the feel of heavy, unresponsive cars, then I do by all means recommend Need for Speed Most Wanted. So guys, uh, thanks for watching my honest review of Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, any Weed of the Voter gear, use promo code TOBYWTD, gets you 20% off. All the links down below, as per usual. However, thanks for watching my review of Need for Speed Most Wanted.